A lot of folks, when they first start using Illustrator, anticipate that they'll be spending most of their time with a pen tool. And if you've never heard of that tool, it allows you to draw any path outline you can imagine one anchor point at a time. It's a great tool, and we'll be seeing it in a future movie, but it's quite labor intensive, which is why much of Illustrator is devoted to the task of helping you find a simpler approach. In this movie, for example, we're going to draw this interstate sign from scratch using nothing more than rectangles and ellipses that will combine together using the Shape Builder tool. So if you're working along with me, the first thing I'd like you to do is go up to the Window menu and choose the Layers command in order to bring up the Layers panel. And you'll see that we have two layers, one's called Template and the other's called Drawing. Notice this circular target to the right of the word template. Go ahead and click on it in order to target the entire layer, and then go up to the control panel to the opacity value and change it to 25%. And that way, we're changing this layer into a kind of tracing template. And just to make sure it works exactly the way we want it to, go ahead and double click on the layer in order to bring up the Layer Options dialog box and turn on the template checkbox right there, and then go ahead and click OK. And that'll lock the layer down so we don't harm it. Now, go ahead and click on the drawing layer to make it active, and then you can click the double arrow icon here in order to hide the layers panel. Now we want to trace the right edge of the sign using a circle. So go over to the Shape Tool Flyout menu, and click and hold and select the Ellipse tool from the list. And then start dragging over here someplace, like so. And so we're going to create a big circle. I want you to press and hold the Shift key as you drag in order to constrain that shape to a circle. And you have to keep the Shift key down the whole time. And by the way, you can also do this number here. And what I'm doing is I'm pressing the space bar as I'm dragging. And as long as the space bar is down, I can move the circle to a different position. And then as soon as I think I have the shape registered properly, I can release the space bar in order to continue to resize the shape like so. Looking at the heads up display there, right next to my cursor, you should have a shape that's about 450 points wide and tall. At which point, just go ahead and release the cursor to make that big circle. Now, in my case, it came out blue. In your case, it might be some other color. What we want, though, is a transparent shape with a stroke. So go ahead and change the fill up here in the control panel to none, the very first watch. And then enter a line weight value of four points for now so that we have a nice thick stroke that we can see very easily. All right, now we need to cut out this scallop right here at the top of the shape. And we're going to do that by drawing another ellipse. So go ahead and drag once again, this time from the top down. And you may find, incidentally, that smart guides are going to get in your way, as they are in my case, because it's snapping to the wrong part of the illustration right now. In which case, just go ahead and press Control-Z or Command-Z on the Mac after drawing that shape, and then go up to the View menu and choose Smart Guides in order to turn them off. And I'm also going to zoom in so I can better see what I'm doing here. And I'll draw again, and I'll see if I can do a little better job of tracing this guy. And that looks like it's going to work out pretty nicely. Notice I used the space bar in order to move the shape around on the fly as I'm drawing it. And then once you get it in place, go ahead and release like so. All right, now we want to draw a couple of rectangles. So go ahead and select the Rectangle tool from the Shape Tool flyout menu. And you want to draw a rectangle that looks something like that. So in other words, I'm dragging down from above the circle, down below, and ultimately snapping into alignment with that horizontal guideline that I've created in advance for you. And then we want another rectangle that comes in from beyond the left-hand edge of the circle, down and ultimately snaps into alignment with the vertical guideline. And you should end up with this fairly confusing now collection of shapes. The next thing to do, just to make sure that we've gotten everything aligned as well as possible, is to press the Control and Spacebar keys. That's Command and Spacebar on the Mac. And just marquee this little area like so, so that we're way zoomed in. Now, it's hard to tell exactly where all the path outlines are. And you can better tell what's going on by going up to the View menu and choosing Outline. 
and that will show you just the outlines of the paths. Now, we're not seeing the rectangles at all, which is great. That means that they're hidden by the guidelines, which is fine. But this ellipse, this edge right here, should be going right through the intersection of the two guides. And to make that the case, go ahead and grab your black arrow tool from the top of the toolbox, select that ellipse. You're not really going to be able to tell it's selected because we're so zoomed in. But just go ahead and drag it over until it appears to travel right through that guide intersection like so. And then you can go back to the view menu and choose preview so that we can see the stroked outlines once again. And I'll press control zero or command zero on a Mac in order to zoom back out. All right, now shift click on the big circle. So both of the ellipses are selected at this point and neither of the rectangles. Then you wanna get the shape builder tool, which is located down here toward the middle of the toolbox. And now notice that my cursor has a little plus sign next to it. I'm gonna move it into this ellipse and drag it down like so across the other portion of the ellipse. So the entire thing is highlighted. And that went ahead and fused that ellipse together and cut it out of the larger circle. Now switch back to the black arrow selection tool, click off the shapes to deselect them, select this guy right there and press the backspace key or the delete key on the Mac to get rid of it. All right, now we need to select all the remaining shapes. And the easiest way to do that is to draw a marquee like so. So I'm just partially selecting that area where all the paths intersect each other. Make sure that you don't select the text, by the way. And then go ahead and grab that Shape Builder tool once again. And this time, rather than just dragging, notice if you press the Alt key or the Option key on the Mac, that little plus sign turns to a minus sign. And if you Alt drag or Option drag like so, you're gonna cut those shapes away. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do so in order to get rid of them. And then you wanna switch back to the black arrow tool and shift click on this shape to deselect it. So I'm gonna back out just a little bit more here so that we can see if I drag these paths up like so, that we're getting rid of all this garbage right here, including this tiny path that used to be right there at the corner. And then you wanna press the backspace key or the delete key on the Mac in order to get rid of all that junk. All right, now we are left with just this path outline here, which is what we need in order to create all the remaining elements in the sign, which is exactly what we'll do in the very next movie.